Hi, everybody, and welcome to another edition of This Week in Hearing. I'm Brian Taylor, and this week we're going to be talking about hearing aid transducers. You know, the little things inside of a hearing aid, like a microphone and a receiver that uh, all of us know about, but we don't really talk about a whole lot. And uh, with me today to talk about that is Matt Skinzer, who is the Director of Product Marketing at Knowles Electronics. Welcome to the broadcast, Matt. Brian, thank you. Good afternoon. Uh, great to be here, and I really uh, appreciate you uh, having us on. Yeah, it's great to, uh, that you can join us. I think most of the people that are watching this probably are familiar, at least on some level, with Knowles Electronics. Um, maybe we could start the, the, uh, our talk today by uh, having you go over your background, uh, how long you've been in Knowles, what you do at Knowles, all those good things. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, my background um, is in uh, product management and marketing for a, a variety of technical products. Um, got my start in medical devices, uh, spent some time in power equipment and uh, power electronics. And then, of course, most recently at Knowles. Uh, I first joined Knowles a little over four years ago um, and managed our hearing health microphone line, uh, which involved both the electric microphones and, of course, the growing uh, mix and offering of our MEMS microphones. Um, and today I manage our balanced armature and receivers line. And in my capacity, you know, essentially responsible for all long-term strategic direction, business management, also making sure that, uh, you know, as we engage with our customers and derive innovation with an organization, that it's aligned with uh, both current and emerging needs in the market um, and, and really looking for new opportunities where our capabilities and technology can add value to the market. Well, there's a lot of things I want to talk to you about today. I know there are things are, um, evolving rapidly inside of it, all the things inside of a hearing aid. But absolutely, um, I've been fitting hearing aids since the early 1990s, just to kind of date myself. And when I started fitting hearing aids, um, we talked about people at Knowles Electronics like uh, Elmer Carlson. I don't yep. know if you've ever heard that name. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> it's on the wall. <laughs> so tell yeah. us. Uh, yeah. I think. I think it would be kind of cool if you could kind of tell us a little bit about Elmer Carlson and what he did in the hearing aid industry to kind of revolutionize it. Yeah, absolutely. And and I love the question because, frankly, one of the things at Knowles, we, of course, are very proud of is our long legacy in the hearing health business. Uh, going back to the 1950s, where we were the first to invent the balanced armature receiver, as well as the style of miniature microphones that was really the first phase and evolution of the hearing aids. And obviously, Hugh Knowles was a big driver of that as well. And, and so Elmer, you know, I mean, we really do credit him along with a couple other key individuals as really being the father of our balanced amateur technology. And of course, he was very instrumental in developing our miniature microphone line as well. But, but, but Mr. Carlson, by the time his career was over, he had over 30 patents at, at, attributable not only to the hearing health industry, but providing, you know, high fidelity audio and microphone technology to the broader audio, communications, and ear, uh, in-ear monitoring spaces as well. And so really, a lot of the foundation of our technology and things we really did to enable the industry really go back to the, some of the things he did with our founding uh, you know, professionals in the, in the 1950s. So yeah, obviously a big name, not just at Knowles, but for the industry. So yeah, back to the 1950s. That's cool. that goes. Yep. There's probably not too many of our listeners that go back that far, but you never know. Um, right. So another person that is, I think, when I think of Knowles, I think of Mead Killian and the K. Absolutely. I just want to say that I think that uh, you know a lot of people think that hearing aids didn't sound very good in the 1980s and 90s, but I think that's not right. I think that because of things that Elmer Carlson did, because of things that Mead Killian did, there were hearing aids out there. The camp, the, the mm -hmm. one that really jumps mm -hmm. to mind that were um, uh, way ahead of their time. So maybe you could talk a little bit about the legacy of Mead Killian and how he fits in at Knowles Electronics. Yeah, you know, obviously, you know, another big name here. Um, and I agree with your your perception of the camp. And, you know, what's, what's really, you know, I think was instrumental with the camp is, you know, here's now um, an analog single channel circuit that was really uh, efficient at low distortion. Um, sound amplification, particularly at higher frequencies and, and louder sound levels, you know, somewhat attributable to, you know, uh, the human speech and, you know, the kind of sounds that, you know, as a hearing aid user, you really want to be able to hear and detect well um, 
you know, in a noisy environment, right? And so the real, what's really key about that circuit is real high fidelity sound on the noises you want to hear while being able to, to help muffle and, and um, you know, not amplify the background noise. And so I, I definitely agree um, that it, uh, I, I think it helps bring that kind of capability in the hearing aids a little more mainstream, right? And I think that was important. Then also, you know, if you just think about, you know, what we really try to do at, at Knowles is, you know, when you look at those capabilities of, you know, low distortion amplification, you know, high efficiency, things like that, it's not just about the electroacoustic performance, you know, and the sound fidelity, but then also the, the key is how do you get that capability into a smaller and smaller package, which really helped drive, you know, the evolution of industrial design and why the hearing aids, you know, today are, certainly look a lot different than, you know, what I think a lot of people have in their brains as, you know, the typical hearing aids back from the 1980s, early 90s, things like that. And so it wasn't just a, a, a matter of audio performance. It was a matter of how did it really enable industrial designs that were, you know, um, more appealing um, and, and more elegant as the technology continued to evolve from there. Yeah, no, that's good to know. I think, um, you know, we, we kind of started off with a walk down memory lane. Maybe we can move into some of the newer innovations. And I know that this two-way receiver for better music quality, uh, you talked about yeah. updates and microphones and receivers, uh, smaller sizes. Uh, tell us more about all that. Yeah, absolutely. And so, you know, as I, one thing I would say is just as a baseline, um, improved performance per package size is just a key enabler for the industry. And the key dynamic in which we're constantly evaluating all our technologies, whether it's getting um, higher SNR microphones into a smaller package, or really increasing our output and bandwidth of our balanced armatures in the same or smaller package, at the end of the day, that is going to fundamentally drive a lot of what we do. Um, you know, more recently, like if we look at the GM RIC, uh, which is a, a two-way device using both a mid-range PA and a balanced armature tweeter to give really that combination of, of kind of wideband um, sound performance, as well as the high frequency performance and the high frequency output, really more attributable to not just high fidelity um, audio, but high fidelity music, right? And so it's not unusual to have, you know, some kind of driver, um, whether it's a woofer or a mid-range driver paired with a tweeter um, for a really more high fidelity sound. And that's us bringing that package in um, a BA form. And I think what's really important there, because I think we're going to see a lot of this um, for a number of reasons. One is, you know, the OTC hearing aid dynamic and how that stands to maybe have a little bit of an emphasis on different feature sets along with hearing health as that grows forward. Then also what we're seeing in the high-end hearable space that's now thinking a lot more about um, hearing uh, personalization and, and enhancement, you know, you really need that wider bandwidth technology in a high fidelity format to really bring that to life. And so as audio is more important, those kind of things and audio in certain aspects of the hearing aid markets is getting more of an emphasis. You really need to balance that with the hearing uh, health capabilities and the bandwidth that our traditional BA technology brings. And so that's what that's really all about. And I think mm -hmm. we're going to see a lot of offerings along that line down the road as, you know, the market evolves. And I guess one thing I would say is, you know, that's certainly one offering we can do with our basic mid, uh, you know, mid-range receiver and our tweeter, but we have a whole host of technologies where we can, you know, mix and match and provide similar, um, you know, custom uh, audio profiles uh, for our users. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and so our, our evaluations or in, in technology uh, advances are continue to focus on how do we get more output, um, wider bandwidth um, in those BAs while also helping with robustness, right? Robustness is a key vector in the industry. Mm -hmm. I think it's something that will always be valued in terms of how we can improve on that. It's whether it's, you know, uh, resistance to things like drop and shock, or it's things that help with ingress or stand up to ingress, you know, those are really critical technologies. Mm -hmm. You know, on the microphone side, I think some of the vectors are the same, and we're really more focused on speech and noise and, and SNR and the things that really help with the directionality and the clarity of a two microphone array in a hearing aid. Mm -hmm. um, robustness is very critical there as well. But also in our ASIC development, we're really spending a lot of time to bring as much capability and flexibility in the uh, ASIC circuit as possible, because as the, um, you know, I think needs change. Um, you're going to need a wider range of configurability, different roll-off points, different sensitivity. You know, I do think eventually the market will get into more dynamic uh, uh, programming and configuration of those kind of technologies. And so we're really trying to lay the groundwork for that 
you know, either a pre-programmed microphone today or something that eventually with a digital input could do the same thing in an actual device real time. Um, so I think those are the key vectors that we're going to continue to focus on. We already have some products in the market um, really focus on those kind of capabilities. And that's where I do expect you'll see Knowles and the market continue to go going forward. Yeah, I think that I'd like to know more. Tell us about some of these products that you're um, alluding to. Yeah, sure. So I would say in the in the past uh, uh, couple years, you know, all of our standard uh, BA lines, uh, our, our standard power, our medium power, our high power, have had significant increases in shock and tumble improvement and expansions of the bandwidth. Um, some of the products that we're going to start coming into the market will use new proprietary ways to even increase um, the output further in those sizes while managing vibration. We are going to start to come to market with some products that, you know, kind of fit in between a single and a dual BA and could really help in the right application with a more um, compelling output to size uh, uh, ratio. And then, of course, continued resilience um, in, in shock and tumble, especially as, you know, some of these devices might get into, or some of these transducers, I should say, will get into devices that, you know, with the changing demographics and hearing aid users, uh, the emergence of OTC, and some convergence at the high end of the hearables, you know, you're going to have a lot more active people and active situations where those devices are going to need to hold up. Um, on the microphone side, our MM30 microphone that are coming to market now is uh, epitomizes really the flexibility um, that, I, that I'm speaking to in terms of the ASIC and that we've looked at a wide range of, of capabilities, also considering things like active noise cancellation and the kind of low roll-offs uh, you need in a microphone to achieve that. You know, all these ASIC capabilities are there as well as what is to date the highest SNR, lowest noise package in hearing health MEMS available in the market. And so I think that's a good example of how, while we continue to look at things like increased capabilities, flexibilities, we're also gonna drive that dynamic uh, from an electroacoustic standpoint as well. Just as a point of clarification, when you talk about BA or balanced armature, can you just, for those out there that are not engineers, <laughs> could you maybe give us a little bit of an explanation about what you mean? Yeah, sure. So the balanced armature technology is very, what is traditionally used in virtually all hearing aid devices, okay? And, you know, it's, it's, its mechanism is a little bit different than what you might see in a dynamic speaker like you'd find in a typical headphone or TWS system in that it uses a read technology to be much more high fidelity in the sound that it provides. And it also has a much higher bandwidth than a typical dynamic speaker. A dynamic speaker will start to roll off, you know, sometimes even before one kilohertz where, you know, we're really focused on maximum output um, all the way up to um, at least eight to 12 kilohertz on the hearing aid side and sometimes up to 20 kilohertz or more um, on the tweeter side as well. So it's a fundamentally different technology. It's highly efficient. It's much less uh, power consumptive. Um, and it's really uh, provides the right balance of high fidelity audio and, you know, uh, mechanical electrical characteristics needed for hearing aids today. I mean, that's really fascinating to me because I think if you could plug a hearing aid into the wall, you could probably, you know, it, it would be a lot easier for the engineer probably to design a really high fidelity system. So the trick for you guys is to how do you do all this on a thing that operates with, uh, you know, limited battery capacity relative to what you would plug right. in the wall. Absolutely. So Absolutely. Really a feat of uh, phenomenal engineering. Absolutely. And and so again, I, I think again, as you know, the continued conversions of audio and hearing health uh, in, in certain segments, I think is going to drive demand for more, you know, multi-driver or even dual uh, diaphragm type technologies, dual receiver technologies that really just continue to provide more and more output. And so the customers are really asking us for in those kind of technologies, how do we continue to increase the bandwidth? How do we make them smaller so they're more conducive to elegant industrial designs, particularly as we start to see things that might be a little bit more, um, you know, uh, TWS commercial-like be introduced on the hearing health side. Mm -hmm. um, and, and things that might also involve, you know, uh, serial or parallel um, configured drivers uh, to help with that as well. So a lot of different ways that we can increase output while using that very efficient technology. Yeah, let's talk about that, this convergence that's happening between hearing aids, earphones, and hearables. You got these new terms now, OTC, yeah. hearable. Uh, what does that mean from your perspective? Yeah, absolutely. So I think the first dynamic that... Um, was already starting to emerge a little bit, just to your points, some of the things we talked about before, you know, as hearing, uh, hearing aid industrial design has really improved. 
as um, audio output and capabilities have really improved, as a younger demographic and more active demographic has started to adopt hearing aids quicker, um, audio has started to become more important. You can already see where some, you know, mainstays in the hearing health industry, um, both on the audio side and then on their system capability side with kind of connectivity and streaming have really tried to, uh, you have really pivoted towards that. Okay. And so I think there's a baseline trend. I think what's happening now and will continue to accelerate in the future is both the OTC and then the continued um, increase in sophistication and attempts to diversify on the hearable side, PSAPs, the audio side, and how that's going to kind of come together at the top. So in OTC, it, it certainly stands to reason that, you know, that's going to be in that mild uh, dynamic uh, hearing loss dyna- demographic. Mm-hmm. Um, they will tend to be more active. Perhaps they might be younger. At that demographic, audio performance is a clear desire and a clear market need. And you can already see with some of the newer products coming out where you know the traditional players on the hearing health side are starting to pivot towards that a little bit. And I think that's going to accelerate greatly here um, on the OTC, in the OTC market as that comes to bear. Mm-hmm. In addition... You know, you've got the the PSAP players, the audio players, they're now starting to think a lot about hearing personalization, okay? And that's, you know, um, a lot of, you know, uh, uh, self-configuring, tuning um, in the EQ band really to to that user's, um, you know, hearing. And you could see how kind of the the technology needs and the audio needs are are starting to become very similar, you know, in the OTC dynamic with the high-end audio. And I think that, you know, that's going to accelerate that divergence, uh, convergence. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think what's going to be interesting to see is, especially as the OTC hearing aid uh, category starts to solidify, you know, a lot of things about that category involve things like the personalization, the self-fitting. Well, some of those capabilities, well, I think will also be used on the commercial side um, with perhaps a, a different nuance and a different claim in that, hey, that's not really about addressing hearing health or hearing loss, but the audio performance desirability is all the same. And so I just think those trends, I think um, I see a lot of similarities. And I think it's natural to assume that once you get to a consumer that is still interested in, in the audio, might just start be getting into the need for some hearing uh, assistance, they might really have a hard decision to make about, do I want to look at more of a OTC hearing aid or do I want to look at a high-end hearable? You know, not sure how that's going to play out yet because I think, you know, there's a lot of uh, growth and develop, market development to come. But I think that dynamic is going to really drive the convergence going forward. Yeah, no, it's an exciting time. I, I think that um, for a long time, people with mild hearing loss weren't really good candidates for hearing aids because right. they could hear the circuit noise or they just didn't like it. It was too big. Or you think about people that have normal hearing but struggle in a few situations with noise. Now they become candidates for some of these devices. Absolutely. Uh, so, you know, some Absolutely. Of them multitasking in nature where they can stream music use it as a hearing aid when they want to. So um, it really opens up the market for a lot of different possibilities, which I think is, you know, everybody benefits from something like that. I would agree. Uh, Anything else that you want our viewers to know about Knowles Electronics and what you're working on? Yeah. You know, I I think, you know, the key thing, you know, is, you know, we will continue to leverage, you know, our capabilities and our legacy uh, to enable these markets. You know, um, obviously a lot of our uh, focus on the hearing health side has been on that business and that continues to be our focus. You know, what I will say is has been really interesting is to see how some of those, you know, as I mentioned, some of those uh, similar needs is starting to drive uh, BA adoption or balanced armature adoption in the commercial space as well. You know, we have customers, I mentioned the hearing personalization, um, you know, some OEMs also looking for more diversification. They tend to use a BA, they might use a, a pure BA solution or uh, what we're seeing a lot more now is, is balanced armature tweeters in a hybrid driver, right? We're using a dynamic for the woofer and the, uh, you know, the, the balanced armature for the high frequency output. You know, mm-hmm. we are very well uh, positioned to serve those markets and those needs, not just in our technology development, but some of the investments we've made um, in our manufacturing capabilities. You know, some of the product announcements we've made more recently point to our automated BA line um, that, you know, Capacity is always a critical need in the industry, right? Um, mm-hmm. Especially as you know, things like OTC and some of the commercial business starts to influence our markets. Demand can you know change very quickly, and we want to make sure that we're well positioned to serve all the needs from our customers. And we put a, a lot of investment into doing that. 
But I think what's also important is, you know, there's going to be a lot of newcomers, right? I think you're going to have new, we've already started to see some newcomers look at the OTC space or the direct to consumer hearing aid space, you know, come in completely with a hearing health orientation, or we've seen um, the interest of uh, commercial electronics players start to think about uh, this OTC space or recognize that in some of their hearables, they're doing things that look a lot like uh, some of the definitions that have put out their OTC hearing aids. And we want to make sure that, you know, it's, it's understood that, you know, if a, co- a commercial customer really wants to uh, differentiate in hearing personalization, provide that high def experience, you know, understanding how the BA really um, helps with some of those uh, hearing augmentation capabilities and how critical it is to have that kind of bandwidth and high fidelity audio at the higher frequencies and how that can really enable the market there. And so, you know, I, I really hope the market uh, as they, you know, as, as both existing and new players start to look at that space, will recognize the capabilities Knowles has, the long legacy and how we can help them enable their products. Because it's very clear to us that, you know, BAs, you know, have a very key role um, in that dynamic, both, um, again, as, as we continue to see the OTC uh, dynamic grow and as, as the commercial space starts to adopt some new technologies there. Well, it's good to know that, um, that you're innovating and evolving just like uh, hearing aid manufacturers and everybody else in the industry. So um, great information. Uh, Thank you. If, if, um, if our viewers want to know more about Knowles, you have a website or a way to contact? Uh, is there a website? Yeah, absolutely. Well, yeah, our website is www.knowles.com and that's K-N-O-W-L-E-S. Um, and of course, you know, uh, whether through their contacts or uh, through information by the web, happy to feel free to reach out to us through the website. Or if you have a, uh, a known sales uh, representative in your area, you can reach out to them. Um, and through, you know, organizations such as yourself or the HIA, people can also be put in contact with our organization as well. A lot of, a lot of good ways to get a hold of us if, if we're not talking already. So, Oh, that's great. Uh Matt from Knowles Electronics, thanks for being on This Week in Hearing. We really appreciate your time and uh, look forward to catching up with you next time you guys have a big uh, a new launch of a new transducer. Brian, thank you. And, and <laughs> same here. And again, we're really excited about where the industry is going and we appreciate the work of organizations um, such as yourselves that are, are helping you know the industry uh, be aware of new trends and new capabilities that the industry is bringing forth to help with hearing health. Uh, Thanks again for your time. Matt Skinzer, Knowles Electronics. Thank you, Brian.